there, welcome to Table Tennis Philosophy. Today we're going to talk about uh, taming your racket. All right. In other words, customizing a racket so that it's going to be the best possible combination of blade and rubber for your game. And I spend a lot of time doing this for students. A lot of times players come in and they have a racket that's not suited to them. Uh, either it's something they bought at the sporting goods store or they went out and bought something on Amazon that sounded good or they went to one of the table tennis websites and bought the fastest thing they could find and wondered why this wasn't working out for them as well as they thought. There's lots, lots of things, not to mention the years of trying to customize my racket to get it exactly the way I want to better and better. And uh, I'll say, as far as that experience goes, um, it's, it's fun, it's time consuming, it's expensive, uh, but uh, it's, it is an evolving thing. The racket that seems to be working best for me right now is not the same one that was working best for me five years ago, and not the best one that was working best for me 10 years ago. And, you know, the one I've got now probably will hold me for quite a while, but it is something that evolves. So if you've been playing for a while, you might still want to think about uh, listening on to the rest of this video to figure out exactly what, what things you want to look for to get your racket just right for you. And uh, like I said, taming a racket, um, that, that implies that the racket was too fast, it was too wild. But uh, let's go more with uh, customizing it because you can get something that's too slow and uh, something that's not suited to your game just as much as you can get something too fast. Although people tend to err on the getting it too fast more often. Uh, that's been my experience. So first thing you want to do is you got to get the blade right. Um, if you have, have the money to do it, uh, this is where you don't want to uh, pinch pennies if, uh, although, you know, getting the right blade does not necessarily at all mean getting the most expensive one, but it does mean getting the right one, and sometimes they cost a little bit more than others. And so, not making cost the main thing that you're looking at, but really trying some different blades, seeing what you have now, thinking, okay, do I like wood blades? Do I like carbon blades? Am I, do I feel like my uh, overall setup is too fast, too slow? Once you get the blade, that's going to affect everything else. You can get really fast rubber and put it on a slow blade, and it's not going to play the same as if it was on a, a high quality offensive blade at all. But there are combinations that sometimes work that you wouldn't think would work. But if you're starting out, if you're a brand new player, I'd advise you go for five ply, all wood blade, all around, maybe all around plus. That's, uh, that's a good, good place to start learning. If, it's, if it has reviews saying that it's uh, not fast but has a good feel, that's probably a good sign that it, it's a good starter blade to use. And as you evolve as a player, you may start discovering uh, that you're really, uh, say, a defensive player, in which case you can start looking at real defensive blades. And if that if chopping is a big part of your game, and I've got a, one of my students, is that's exactly what his situation is. Um, he actually got a racket that wasn't that fast, but in his case, it was too fast for him. He doesn't play all that often, and his natural tendency growing up was to chop. That's what he enjoys. A slower racket keeps him in the point longer and gives him his best chance to uh, win. So as you evolve, you may go slower, you may go faster, but a good place to start is right in the middle. All right. Um, once you've got the blade right, now you got to think about about the rubber, and this is a, a jungle of uh, possibilities. And I, no way I can get into all of the possibilities when you think about anti-spin, 
um, pips in, pips out, sponge thickness, all of those possibilities. But if you've got the blade right, you can experiment a little bit with the rubber and you know try other people's rackets. Um, a standard thing I do for intermediate players is go, let's just say they're a good all-around player, forehand loop, backhand block, push as well, developing their serves, kind of in that, that area. Um, I usually don't feel like I can go too wrong recommending, say, 2.0 sponge on the forehand and 1.8 on the backhand and um, see how that goes. Most players are very happy with that and, uh, you know, eventually they may uh, develop into players that can play back from the table. They'll want uh, at least 2.0 on both sides, but as they're developing, the 1.8 gives them a little bit better chance. So if you're confused about thickness, I would uh, be a little more liberal on the forehand, a little more conservative on the backhand generally. Definitely exceptions to that. Um, what kind of rubber are you going for? Again, no way to tell you all the different possibilities, but let me tell you where, I, where my mind is on this. Whatever you get, it's got to have some good grip to it. And even, like I said, right now I've gone with the very sticky hurricane rubber. So, you know, when you're first starting off, and I know I'm having to coach players to tell them, we're not trying to hit the ball, we're trying to spin a wheel and, and get that concept into their head that they're trying to roll the ball, brush the ball, carry the ball, spin the ball, not necessarily hit the ball. And uh, even though, yeah, we all hit the ball, but it, if, you, if you think of it in terms of spinning a wheel, your game will, uh, you know, once you really grasp that and incorporate it into your game, it'll change the way you look at table tennis forever. And so if you're doing that, you've got to have a racket that's capable of doing that. If you've got sticky rubber, it's capable of doing it. The problem with really fast rubber that doesn't, you know, maybe you had a nice sheet of Tenergy and uh, it was a good sheet three years ago and now the grip has worn off considerably, it's probably still fast, but not everybody's going to be able to hold the ball, grip the ball quite the same way they did earlier. And if your strokes aren't good, you're really not going to be able to do it. Um, certain uh, Pips rubber also uh, has like a um, rough, rough tops on the, the Pips. Those will also hold it. So it, you never feel like your shots are just just flat hitting or just, just hitting. You're actually rolling the ball. Even when it looks like a flat hit, you're still visualizing the spin of the ball and you know you either you know went slightly up, slightly to the side, or if you're chopping, slightly under it. So you've got to get that concept. So there's a lot of ways you can go wrong. I would say the high points of this are make sure you get the blade right, if at all possible. Do all, all the research you can. Um, if you got extra money, put it into the blade. You can always change the rubber out if it doesn't work out exactly right, but try to get the blade right. And then be a little conservative with the rubber, but make sure it's something that's really going to grip the ball. And um, some, uh, some rubber just does it better. And if you like the sticky stuff, I think that's where table tennis is trending. And everybody that I've recommended, uh, the particular version of Hurricane, that I'm using has really, really liked it. But, you know, there's there's people that uh, it didn't work out exactly perfect for, but they their strokes were good enough that they were able to grip the ball and complete their strokes um, either way. But, all right, that's, that gives you a little insight into uh, perhaps taming a blade or customizing a racket uh, to, to your needs and maybe in, in addition to that, if it's still confusing, I would get a get the opinion of a a couple 
uh, experienced players and a couple different coaches, but in the end, it's going to be your decision because uh, you'll probably get four different opinions if you ask four different people, and you've got to sort that out yourself. All right, good luck. We'll see you next time. Thanks.